with several solo draws, has been terrific in commanding possession. What I love about Kay Morissette at the draw control, she's so very comfortable with the ball in her stick. Sometimes when draw specialists get the ball into their stick, they want to get it out of their hands as quickly as possible under pressure. But she handles pressure well. She was a former midfielder. She still has that quickness in her wrist, knows exactly where she's placing it, gets it safely before heading off the field. Quick hands. She's also a very accomplished scorer during her time at Louisville. And look at this draw control number, Morissette versus opponents. And she, she could single-handedly stop runs. And it says something that Morissette is the primary draw controller on a team with Dana Doby on it. You know, what's interesting about the two of them, their coaching staff gives Dana, as well as Kay, the ability on the field, the decision to, if they want to take it, if they want to roll with one another, they can take their time and switch off and on without having to ask the coaching staff. Morissette, a little shaken up. And Courtney, she comes from some royalty, as Scott Teeter looks upon. Kay about to get to her feet. Of course, the name Morissette, well known in Canada. One of her distant cousins is Alanis Morissette, the famed singer. And I did not know that. Mm -hmm. Impressive. Mm -hmm. Oh, here's a pun for you. You ought to know. <laughs> One of our I... best songs, as Kay Morris said here, well, trying to walk off the field under her own power. And something to, something to watch for as the remainder of this game goes. Let's watch the ankle as that's Morris said in the air, trying to come down. And indeed, yes, the right ankle. That Got a little twisted. So we'll watch for her return. But the great news for Canada, they do have Doby that could fill in for the remainder of this one. And at this point, as a coaching staff, I know they wanted to give more time to their second midfield today, Canada. Same thing, why not give their other draw takers an opportunity, get time. Dana Doby, no slouch. I'd say she was probably one of the first to make taking the draw an actual specialty in the women's game. And now, as you know, you have players that are recruited strictly off of that ability. Possessions mean everything. On the rollback, Maria Panzini was just about to let it rip and Canada called for a foul. Maria Panzini being aggressive. That'll get herself to the top of the fan for an 11 meter. Maria Panzini straight on. One of two so far in this tournament. Puerto Rico had the day off yesterday. On Sunday, she went for three goals and the assist against Norway. Well, they don't give her the free position. Delaney Rodriguez Shaw turns, and she missed a great look. Rodriguez Shaw has been shooting the ball great in this tournament. 12 of 17. Puerto Rico has Becca. On the rollback and on the drive by Christina Clayton. And Puerto Rico being a lot more aggressive here in the second quarter. That's exactly right. They're putting their head down. They're dodging hard. They're taking risks. That's what you need when you're playing the number two seed in the world. Put it out there. There's nothing to lose. Try new things. Play the game that you know how to play. Do not be stressed or nervous. Otherwise, you're going to play tighter. Keep her there. Keep her there. And as Brianna Canasquillo carries, a whistle off ball against Canada. So Delaney Rodriguez Shaw will get a look. So this is perhaps who Puerto Rico would choose in any scenario to shoot free position. She's three of five so far from the 11 at the Women's World Tournament. And Rodriguez Shaw goes low and the save is made. Well, Hulsall not fooled. And is able to comfortably outlet, and Canada will look for the clear. Transitionally, 
It doesn't seem like Puerto Rico is doing a lot in the middle of the field. They're just getting into the hole, deciding we're going to be playing defense. Let's just get set, prepared, and ready so that they aren't taking a quick and hard fast break where they'd rather have Canada in settled offense. The flip pass, Evans. Evans able to turn the corner. Simple but effective. Erica Evans with three in the opening half. We talked about Erica's speed in the open, but right here, signature Canadian stuff going on right there. Erica Evans coming off of the moving screen. That nice little flip from Nicole Peroni. Taking it hard to cage. The important part after a flip happens, you got to turn. Turn your shoulders, turn your body at the cage. You don't want to continue fading out to the side. As soon as she caught that ball, she immediately took the turn, which is what we teach all those young players to do. And ultimately, giving herself number three, and it's not even the end of the first half. So here's Dolby in the draw circle. So indeed, after Kay Morissette left the game with the ankle injury, Doby will step in for this next draw. Rodriguez Shaw of Puerto Rico went up for it, and the ball will belong to Canada. So after Puerto Rico won the last one, eight out of nine for Canada. Bianca Cheveri will drop it off for the attack and accordingly. With Canada spreading the field, it makes things a lot easier to challenge in one-on-one -on -one situations, give yourself a lot of space. It's just six on six offensively and defensively inside of the restraining line, 10 v 10 in international play, different than the collegiate game. Well, Erica Evans took a couple of hits. The first one, there was no whistle. The second time was blown dead with Maria Panzini defending against her. And now and one of the officials has an offensive foul signaled against Evans. Well, now they'll reverse it. They did point the other way. So Evans will have a free position. And Evans makes Canada two for two from the 11. And they increase to 7-1. Erica Evans, one of the veterans on Team Canada. Scoring her fourth goal of the match yet today. As she's challenging, we see that stick right there. Looked like the first stick check got her in the head. The second may have been a little bit of acting on her way to the ground because those look good. But the first one is certainly what got her that foul called. Subsequent, doesn't matter. The whistle had already blown. Evans 4 4 shooting and gets a deserved break. Well, the balance that Canada has shown in their last few games Australia win 9 5, a little bit of a grinder, but then I thought it was an impressive win a couple days ago against England 13 8. And then yesterday, overwhelming Scotland 20 1 in a Pool A game as Rodriguez Shaw was able to push it to the outside. And here's Natalie Panzini. And Puerto Rico with possession. As there's the feed to Isabella Henson Vendrell. There are three Henson Vendrells. They're from Haymarket, Virginia. Two of them are twins that will be freshmen at Villanova in the fall. Angle right. Hustle the save. And in the crease anyway against Maria Panzini. You got to love that. Offensively, Puerto Rico, they're getting shots. They're getting looks at the cage. Ideally, you want to be translating each and every time you have the ball in the offensive end. Morris, flip pass, shovel pass accordingly. Well, Canada has shown a full array of shots in this first half. We have yet to see the shovel shot go yet. 
but they've been trying, and it's 8-1. We see a save right here coming up big for Cameron Halsall. She was able to get that ball out quick, transition it in a fast break situation, creating numbers. Hannah Morris inside. That feed, the catch, all takes a lot of skill being able to handle the ball. That little Twizzler shot, she went low to low. Most players electing to rise that into a riser shot. But very calm, cool, and collected Aurora accordingly. Anytime she's touching the ball, she's relaxed. It's like Canadian relaxed, right? It's like, eh, I'm playing a lacrosse game, I'm sitting on my sofa watching a TV, and then I just score a goal. Of course, so much made of the box lacrosse experience and the upbringing that Canadian both boys and girls players come up with being comfortable in tight spaces, right? That's what the indoor game can bring you, as well as super tight stick skills. Where's K. Morissette? And trying to keep that, that right foot or that right ankle stretched out, and perhaps her afternoon is done. Canada with another possession, feed to the front, looking for Ali Jimerson. And Canada keeps back up. As much as you can rest your dominant players, your veterans, giving younger players an opportunity to get onto the field, get some time, or injured players getting time to relax. Oh, how about the cradle there? Annabelle Child with the release. Her fourth goal of this tournament. It'll be a sophomore at Harvard. Nicely done. Great handle there with a native of Oakville, Ontario via the Hill Academy. Allie Jimerson has vision. We talk about her being inside as a target, but she is able to be a dual threat as well. Annabelle Child, the product of that feed. Again, Canada with their box lacrosse, their incredible stick work. They are able to just catch and finish in tight spaces, small areas, and make it look effortless. So Child getting involved. Canada continues to shoot a super percentage. 9 of 16, Jimerson on the assist. Five different goal scorers for the Canadians. Unlike NCAA, there's not alternating possession. If a draw needs to be redone, we set it up again in international play. And there's something to be said for that. I kind of miss it, although it does make the game move faster, NCAA-wise. Dobie had the first opportunity at it. Puerto Rico had it. And whistles will blow this play dead. And they will back up Isabella Henson Vendrell. Stepping in is Tiana Vasquez, will be a junior at Binghamton. Christina Clayton, one of the co-captains of this Puerto Rico team. 32 years old and rediscovered her love of lacrosse. Following the passing of her father, similar story by her head coach, Natalie Bermudez, and they've really bonded over that. Oh, it's perhaps an own goal for Canada. In front was Clayton. They tried to bring it back to Halsall, and a mistake by Canada will make it 9-2. When these things happen on the field, it was a nice little look for a two-man game. Pass was knocked down, but as it was pushed into the crease right there, a little too quickly, unable to handle. We see number 21, Bianca Chevery right there. And it was just a slow roller. Those are unlucky, right? Nothing you can do about that. You just have to move on to the next play. Not the typical for Canada, but if they're going to have it happen, they'd rather in today's game as opposed to a medal game. Yep. Certainly in a 9-1 game at the time. We'll see who gets credited with that goal. Clayton the closest to it for Puerto Rico. Doby draws it back accordingly off the circle. As 
Canada is setting things up. We've seen a lot of their flip, their two-man game. But they are playing a lot of lacrosse in a small amount of days. So to save some legs, take some time off the clock, especially in the second half, I think will be ideal for them to keep some freshness. Child trying to pass through a double team. And it's a long 10 days of lacrosse, and even before it, scrimmages, the practices that take place beforehand. Freshness, perhaps just as important as the level of talent you have on your roster. There's a lot to be said for ice baths, letting your body have some recovery time. As many as eight games in those 11 days, I, I couldn't imagine at this point. Moving screen here against Canada after their flip game continued. So Puerto Rico stay disciplined, and they get the turnover here with 117 and counting. First half in this continuous clock. Clock will stop on any whistle under 30 seconds in the international game. Well, they got the ice baths down low right by the field, so I know every team has been taking advantage of that. Not us or anybody on our crew. We've been too busy. And as you look, we have legs getting wrapped, ankles being taped at this point. There's going to be bumps and bruises, but that big play on the field, maybe you're just a little tired, you step a little off, or your quad didn't quite get as much stretch as you needed this time. So definitely players getting rest. I know some players or some coaching staffs, especially Team USA, Jenny Levy has been wanting the roster size to increase in numbers. Yeah, it's 18 on the women's side. The teams were able to, to add two COVID alternates, but that is only if you had players that test positive, not injuries. On the men's side of the World Championship, the roster limit is 23. Child leads the break behind the back, Jimerson. Jimerson might have been in the crease anyway, and indeed, well, hold on a second. They're going to keep it here with Canada. Jimerson had certainly fallen in the crease. Six seconds showing here first half, so Canada might get one more look. So Morris restarts. Well, let's redo that again. So I'm not sure what that call was. Defensively, you are allowed to go in the crease. Um, definitely thought Canada may have stepped in there as well. Child backdoor, Riemann forced to make one more save on Jimerson. Annabelle Child threw it up for her. They had connected on a play like that against the U.S. on opening night. But it's 9-2 Canada, the two seed leading 15 seeded Puerto Rico in the opening round of the championship bracket. We're back at the half to Towson. Yo, yo. Do you know, do you know, do you know? I've seen it all before. Let's go. Tiger. Just the shot for the bend the knee. My main man, money. Hey, there ain't nothing I ain't seen. OK, old school. Have you seen someone ball like John Moran? You know you can't. You've never seen anyone like a thing. The point got Queen, Sky, or Chloe Kim. Do you know there's never been anyone else like them? Look, OG, no disrespect. I know you think you've seen everything, but you ain't seen nothing yet. Checkmate. Every player knows the skills you learn on the field can be the foundation for anything you choose to do in life. Thank you for the sweat, the tears, the pride, and for the celebration we share. When I reach for a stick, it's like I'm shaking hands with history. Thank you for connecting me to a greater community. It's more than a game to me. 
It's a gift to be a positive force in young athletes' lives. And I'm thankful I can help the next generation develop a love for the sport. When I was his age, those moments on the field meant everything. Thank you for giving us a way to stay connected, even as they get older. We're growing beyond goals on the field. And our futures are united. Would you give me the opportunity to fuel aspirations and to ignite potential? So thank you, lacrosse. For inspiring me to be me. We are better safer and wiser together and we're building a stronger future for everyone Canada finalists in 2017 looking to march back to the gold medal game they lead Puerto Rico 9-2 at the half we're back with a look at our halftime highlights from Towson It was 10, 10 to start. Yep. 9 2 Canada at halftime. Most of the umbrellas have now been put away after a passing rain shower has departed. And the Canadians with the big lead. And welcome back here at Towson. Ralphie Norchuk alongside Courtney Martinez Connor. Well, for Canada, the first 10 draws belong to them and they made it look effortless. Kay Morissette does such a great job offensively, giving her team possession. Winning those first five draw controls meant anything. It means they can control the game and set the tempo, and the pace was all in their favor. And as we look at our highlights, uh, two major stars. We talked about Erica Evans early, but Aurora Cordingly, fantastic as well. Two goals and an assist. Inside, Aurora Cordingly, she's such a finisher. She chokes up on her stick for eight meters, giving less stick to show for crashing in defensive players. And then her handles inside, so very fluid and easy. Evans, four of four shooting. I love to watch Erica Evans and her speed to goal. She's tenacious, she's strong, and she is powerful. Canada at 9-2 as we look at uh, 
the draw control number, early advantage for Canada with all the possessions. Eventually, Puerto Rico is able to get some more possessions. They got the benefit of an own goal, but otherwise the shots are 18-6. The biggest things that jump out, the difference in draw controls and then the number of shots taken. Canada has scored more goals than the shots that Puerto Rico has taken. Ultimately, you need to be going to cage. You have to be aggressive. You have to put everything out there because this is their opportunity to either move forward or go on to the consolation bracket. Canada, the two seed in great shape. Puerto Rico, we'll see what kind of third quarter they'll bring us in a moment on ESPN+. Plus. We want the gold medal. We've been dreaming of it our entire lives. But this summer, we want more. We have an opportunity together to change the sport and women's athletics for the better. The eyes of the lacrosse community will be on us. Never has this sport been more popular. Never has this platform been bigger. So what's this about? A team of talented women with a shared goal. Inspiring a new generation, one whose identity is a sense of pride and not a limitation. Relentlessly pursuing equity in our sport and beyond, we want the greatness of all women's athletes to shine. The world will be watching. Let's put on a show. This is more than a medal. Are you with us? Fasten your seatbelt. The game you've always loved just found a new gear. Introducing World Lacrosse Sixes. <laughs> it's speed and scoring. Tempo and transition. Athleticism and action. It's big time energy packed onto a smaller playing surface. It's the game you've always loved, brought to you at warp speed. It's lacrosse on the Autobahn. Don't blink. This is World Lacrosse Sixes. Canada, the two seed, three and one through Pool A play. And they've got the commanding lead, nine to two over Puerto Rico. The sun has returned after we had showers in the afternoon. The United States game against Hong Kong, China, scheduled for 7.30, still on. A look at this side of the bracket. Czech Republic at the half, the 10 seed leading Germany. Trying to advance to tomorrow's quarterfinals with Canada and Puerto Rico, the winner of this game, playing tomorrow at five o'clock Eastern. All set up at 11 a.m. tomorrow, England and Israel. Interesting matchup there. England crushing Wales today in a rivalry battle from the British Isles. And England able to outclass Wales for, for a large stretch of that game. Wales was just not able to run much offense. And England showing how good their defense has been. It's been good in Pool A and even better against some of the other competition. Dana Doby returning to the draw circle after an injury to Kay Morissette in the second quarter, and Morissette has not returned. Canada pushes transition. Emily Boissonneau turns and has another shovel shot for Canada. What I love about this, Emily Boissonneau, she's a defensive stalwart for Canada, coming in big off of that draw. And she had space. She had space around that defensive player. You can see her think about it. I can do this. She's the head coach at Pitt. New program within the ACC. They had a stellar first year campaign. But I tell you, all of her players who've been watching her throughout this tournament, they have to be impressed. She's fit. She's tough. 
She's a mom and she can still do it. She used to do it to the tune of 242 career goals at Detroit Mercy and was an attacker of the year in the league. And Boissonneau able to push transition there. Well, I would imagine if you have Dana Doby on your roster, the shovel shot and perfecting it probably becomes contagious when you watch her practice it daily and probably passes along some of the uh, finer points of the shovel shot. I mean, to be at their practices and to play at that skilled level that they all do, even the defensive players, oftentimes people think defenders don't have stick work. Many of the players all start at midfield and then you get moved on from there. Maddie Baxter pushes midfield transition. Down low it comes Riemann making the save. No, she did not. It trickles through from the angle, Hannah Morris. And Canada with two quick ones to open up the third quarter. It's 11-2. When I think about the halftime talk that was probably given to Team Canada, Maddie Baxter with a quick transition, dishing it off to Hannah Morris, it would have been about intensity going hard. They just seem to be going through the motion at times right now. And this is, yes, a first matchup, the two versus the 15 seed. But they still need to play at their pace and their level of play. And so already we see two quick goals to start out this third quarter. And Courtney, I ask you as a head coach, former head coach at Arizona State, former great star at Maryland on the defensive side, how difficult is it for a team and how do you balance playing hard with urgency 100% when you're in the midst of this tournament format where you're also trying to preserve legs on some veteran players. And while trying to stave off injury, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, it is a good balance. You can go hard and then you can slow things down. When you slow things down offensively, it doesn't mean that everyone is standing for the entire time and trying to go everything at half speed. It just means you're now changing the pace, taking a few minutes off the clock, and then resetting, and then you go hard towards the goal. You definitely don't want to practice feeding from a standstill or challenging half speed. It's that balance of the two. The game's first yellow card issued to Puerto Rico's Maria Pansini. Two minute non-releasable. So Canada goes to work. Riemann intercepts. She stepped into the passing lane. Accordingly was looking for a skip pass. And Tia Riemann will now outlet for Skylar Carrasquillo. And Carrasquillo, trail check from behind. And Canada will come up with the ball. Clever trail check from Nicole Peroni. And Canada has it back. So they'll have six on five again, player up once they step into the box. In this tournament, I've seen teams, Courtney, where they'll put defenders on midfield for a full game just to save legs that way, switch positions, just to take a little bit wear and tear off. That was Peroni. Winning the race to the end line is Anna Riemann. Peroni perhaps thought she was fouled inside the 11. Quite a heads up play defensively. Making sure to back up the goal. Saw that Canada was not. Love the vision, the awareness that that was an easy possession grab for Puerto Rico. Anna Riemann, as you had mentioned, coming up with that big ground ball. Oftentimes, if you are able to get another possession, whether it's out of a hustle play or, in my opinion, that's an IQ play, right? You see the opposing team not backing something up and you're able to run it out on the defensive side, you've just created a bonus round. Still about 15 seconds left for Puerto Rico. Down a player. So Christina Clayton looks for an outlet. And she finds it. Now we are all even with Puerto Rico stepping into the box. Carrasquillo threw it over the top. She was fouled. So Brianna Carrasquillo, there from Alpharetta, Georgia, but grew up on Long Island. Brianna, three goals against Israel in a losing effort. And 
throw back here to Adriano Nujain. They fake the foot pass, then shooting on the move, Isabella Henson Vendrell. She's the youngest and, by, in my opinion, the fastest of the three Henson Vendrell sisters. Loved Isabella's speed off of that, coming around, shooting with her dominant side. She had a very quick release. Looked like it just hit off the top of that crossbar, barely tipped by Canada's goalkeeper. Brianna Carrasquillo feeding inside to her sister Skyler, and that's broke it up. Well, the window closed quickly, and Canada to lend the clear ahead. Speed from Lydia Sutton, Minneapolis native. Sutton turns on the brink, Jimerson back behind, accordingly. Eyes for the cutter in front, and it's a layup for Doby. A little secondary break. Doby cuts to the front, and she's got her first. It's 12 2. A nice transition by Lydia Sutton to Allie Jimerson. Ball moving quickly. That makes it very difficult for the defense, ultimately ending in Aurora accordingly stick. Dana Doby thought she might throw something flashy right there, but getting the job done easy. Nice little cut from that weak side. As soon as the ball moves from one end of the field to the other, behind one part of the goal cage to the next, defense having to turn completely, as well as the goalkeeper, makes it very difficult to set up, see where that ball is coming from. Canada making it look easy. And Dana putting goal number 12 on the board. One of the many iconic players that are attached to a country that are playing in this championship. And Doby synonymous with Canadian women's lacrosse. Assistant coach at Loyola. Under another great Jen Adams synonymous with Australia. Skyler Canarskio, draw control for Puerto Rico. The lead 10 for Canada. On your right. If there's a bright spot, I think, with K Morissette being out, Puerto Rico has been able to battle at the draw control. On the flip side, Canada seeing what would happen if K is not out on the field, what adjustments they need to make. Different areas where Dana needs to be putting that ball to be successful. Draw control is now 11 to 6. Much different the way this game started out, where Canada virtually had every possession. Rodriguez Shaw shooting low, changing release points. What a goal there from Puerto Rico's leading score here at the World Championship. 12-3. I love how Delaney sets this up. She puts the stick in her left hand for a quick split dodge. Is able to get rid of the ball before that sliding defensive player number 15, Emily Boissonneau, has made contact. Ultimately, what set up that play as well when she was splitting, Jill McNaughton, the Canadian defender, going for a stick check. You want to make sure to hold body positioning defensively, but Delaney Rodriguez Shaw for Puerto Rico taking advantage of that stick swinging, making a quick move all in sequence, putting goal number three. I think they're getting confident out on the field at this point, and as the quarters move on, that's going to continue to grow, and it can only help them. Her 13th of this tournament of Long Bano, Massachusetts, had a great freshman year at Duquesne. Doby wins the draw and then flips it back for accordingly. Canada on the other end. Meanwhile, change goalies as Cassidy Eckert has come on to start this third quarter after Cameron Halsall had started. Made three saves. Morris. Negron stays on her. Excellent defense. Feet are moving. Child back outside, and we get a whistle before the shot. Nice spin there by Annabelle Child. And you could see how that sequence opens things up.
It'll be Megan Kinna, free position for Canada. Kinna, finishing high. Canada now three of three on free position, and the lead back to 10. Offensively, when you step up to that 11 meter free position, for those that played collegiately, it is farther out than what they are used to. So that quick start is oh so important. Making sure you get up to speed as quick as possible, either hedging away from that stick side. That way the defensive player has a little bit farther to travel before you get your shot off. Megan Kinna doing an excellent job at both of those. Kinna has two. Dobie has taken every draw since the injury to Kay Morissette. In the vicinity of Cordingly. As she rakes it to herself and grabs it. And Aurora into the attack. A starting attacker her entire career. Big Ten attacker of the year before transferring over to Maryland for her fifth year, but plays on the draw. A deflected pass, Riemann nearly had the ground ball, then this one fed to the front by Jimerson. The recovery, here comes Maddie Baxter. Inside it went, Jimerson went back across, challenged pass, accordingly hustles. And the ball went out just barely by a few inches. Ball signaled over to Canada. They don't waste any time. Peroni, that one dinging off the top of the crossbar. Nice little hitch before she took that shot, freezing the defense, which created that open lane to her right-hand side. Peroni thought about the draw and dump, then fired at Riemann. So Puerto Rico starting to make some adjustments in a two-on-two. -two. As they play a team from Pool A in their very first World Championship appearance. As you look at the save from Peroni, she's winding up, she has space, but Victoria Riemann, excellent job following it every step of the way, holding her position, holding that line and exploding to the ball. She was just a freshman last year at Princeton, a graduate of Phillips Exeter, and an Under Armour All-American when she was a senior before heading off to college, strong, but that's not the clear she was looking for. Nope, and now she retreats. Here comes Maddie Baxter. Baxter across. It is Jimerson. Costly giveaway. Riemann could not get back in time, nor could one more teammate. It created a two-on-one, and Canada is able to execute. Defensively in the ride, Canada not giving any space to Puerto Rico. Maddie Baxter with the interception. She had probably her best game the other night that I'd seen her play. And continuing on in that effort, number four, the nice little feed to Ali Jimerson down low. A few little fakes to freeze that goalkeeper before taking her shot, making it look easy. But the transition game, obviously earlier we saw Puerto Rico getting in hard and fast to slow it down, and we get why. They weren't looking to play defense in the midfield because they want to stop the speed of what Canada runs with. There's a good draw control sent out there by Rodriguez Shaw. Natalie Panzini to go, and it deflects in. Well, the defender, Brenna Shanahan, got a stick on it, and that perhaps fooled Cassidy Eckert off the bounce, and Puerto Rico gets one back 14-4. Coming off of the draw control, moving with speed. We see her acceleration to goal. And that was almost a slow roller. We see that little move, a nice little face dodge. And the ball bounced, just redirected for Canada's goalie. Cassidy Eckert, change of pace. Again, one of those tough to follow, but a nice job of Puerto Rico putting their fourth goal on the board.
Rodriguez Shaw kicks it around, nearly got it from Doby. And this time, Brianna Carrasquillo came up with it. Well, Courtney, when you're in a situation like Puerto Rico, certainly there is uh, the name of Canada, as you hear it so often in college, high school sports, where the athletes sometimes think that they're going up against the name of that. Puerto Rico perhaps has made the adjustment, but it remains a 10-goal Canada lead at the end of three. The two seed looking to comfortably advance. They lead Puerto Rico 14-4 on ESPN+. Let's have a look at the top five plays in Pool A. It starts with Charlotte North, number five, going behind the back. Charlotte North showcasing her stick work. And then again, you have Sam Apuzo with another behind the back. Team USA showing that they have just as fancy sticks as their Canadian friends. And then Olivia Hump taking over, running through the pressure, the defensive pressure all over her body, getting that one off one-handed. And then her celebration, gotta love that. Last part, Kaylee Waters battling for this ground ball. Love her effort. At the end of the day, she didn't come up with it, but the play was not done. She's able to recover and stop and shock Becca Lane of Australia, who thought she had an open goal. And then this is play number one, Dana Doby on opening night against the US. Dana Doby, she has such a presence on the field, youthful energy, she does it with flair. That's why so many players on opposing teams love to get their picture taken with her. Yes, they may be matched up against her, but she is truly one of the goats in the women's game. Doby comes up with a draw, off accordingly. I will add, if, if we had a sixth, uh, you were on the broadcast, the free position behind the back flipped by Doby, that I think it was Aurora accordingly had the shot on free position. It hit the post. That was super impressive. That 
even though that was not a goal, I think that should be in the top five. Everybody was calm and relaxed. All of a sudden, Dobie flipped it quickly, and it was like a set play, and only the post stopped the highlight. I think it should still be a highlight. And there's a Kayla trainer, like, no go zero angle goal um, with her non-dominant hand, as, which she's just as good at. Annabelle Child able to dodge back to her strong left hand and starts the scoring for the fourth, 15-4. The Child in the dodge has two. As we see that ball maneuvering one to the next, again, those flip pays, plays, the screens moving from one direction to the other. Annabelle Child, she's still a student at Harvard University. Graduating in 2025, a truly great two-way midfielder. She's probably one of the most consistent on Team Canada. She does a lot of the dirty work within the 30s, but this time putting herself on the board. Annabelle Child with great ambition. She wrote out her goals as a seven-year-old. One of them was to play lacrosse at Harvard, and that has come true. Nearly two minutes into the fourth, Accordingly, we see the patience of Canada when they see six red jerseys in front of them rather than trying to force a fast break. They know they don't have numbers. Slow things down, run their offense, which they've still been pretty successful at at this point. Morris is the cutter and trailing at her hip and then knocking it away, Isabella Henson Vendrell. And Isabella races away from Canada Reed Defenders and is able to separate. Pass ahead, finish, Delaney Rodriguez Shaw. Love this defensive play by Puerto Rico. From the defensive end, just good, tough, on the body. Canada checking themselves on that dodge, and then speed. Speed from Isabella coming out of the defensive end. Her eyes are up, and her teammate, Delaney Rodriguez-Shaw, busting downfield, putting herself ahead of the other defensive players, able to make that transition with ease. They actually did not have numbers, but they had speed and they were open, which created that opportunity. Second for Rodriguez Shaw. The Puerto Rico All-Tournament is, we talk about how teams get better day to day. Coach Nally Bermudez has wanted her team to speed up through pool play. 15 fives our score with a timeout. And Bermudez with a big smile there on the Puerto Rico bench. And what a play that was for Puerto Rico to build off of. As I touched on earlier, Courtney, uh, sometimes there is that feeling of, wow, we're going up against Canada. And you have to kind of set that aside or the U.S. and realize we're playing a game and get over that perhaps intimidation or the name you're facing. And I think they've done that. Each quarter has gotten better and better already at the start of this fourth quarter. Essentially, it's one to one. One goal for Canada, one goal for Puerto Rico, and they're gaining confidence with each bit of confidence. Then they drive harder. Then they make plays on the defensive end of the field, which we've already seen thus far. So I think winning-wise, this is a win for them, getting better each quarter. Maybe not the entire game, but that's a step in the right direction for their program. The loser of this game goes to face the loser between Germany and the Czech Republic. Live look in the Czech Republic. 11 minutes and change left with an 11-7 lead over Germany. The Czechs, the 10 seed, Germany, the 7 seed. So a great game there. And the Czech Republic, six teenagers on the roster and a very slick attack group that also plays a lot of box lacrosse like the Canadians. So this is a look at this portion of our championship bracket. 
And the losing teams go into the consolation portion of the championship bracket. And there's an overall consolation bracket of the 13 other teams. The championship bracket had the top 16 teams out of pool play. At this point last night, Canada versus Scotland. Canada had been holding on to the ball for a long time already. They were really just doing a big possession game. And Scotland was only able to score one goal on them. And you, you look at these youngsters out on the field right now. They've scored five. There's still another 11 minutes left. All of these are positives for them to build on. And the game's not done. And we had an earlier upset already in the championship bracket. 12-seeded Haudenosaunee defeating fifth-seeded Scotland. Scotland now 0-5. And, and that sets up a great rivalry battle in the championship consolation bracket. Wales, as we get shooting space outside, rather that's going to be Haudenosaunee facing England coming up tomorrow. Or rather, check that. To correct myself, that'll be Australia in that matchup. Taking it to goal, Nicole Peroni. But that was a 12-5 upset based on the seeds, just like NCAA college basketball, where 12-5 upsets are a commonplace. We have it here in the Women's World Championship as we see the goal by Peroni. That was a severe angle as a righty. She needed to get speed off of that hash. She did. She was able to protect with her body in front. Very smart play. The only next best smart play would have been to hold possession for a settled offense. But with that quick jump, she knew she had it as long as she protected. Nicole Peroni putting herself on the board in the goal category. You look at the difference. We have one with a goggle, one without. It's not per team. It's a rule internationally where it's your choice. It's not mandatory how it is in NCAA play or in the high school within the United States. Many of the players who choose to wear them because they've played at the NCAA level, they feel comfortable in them. Those that don't, it's a habit as Dana Doby just came up with it. The goggles were not mandated when she played at that time. Canada with another possession. They lead 16-5. Ralph Binarczyk alongside Courtney Martinez. Connor joining you here from Towson University, Johnny United Stadium. Two-seeded Canada leading Puerto Rico. The 15 seed, 16-5 in the round of 16 in the championship bracket. Canada will get set for a quarterfinal matchup tomorrow. As this overpass will be picked up by Alexa Vega of Puerto Rico, a high schooler from Port St. Lucie. Ahead comes Natalie Panzini, who's got a couple of the Puerto Rico goals. And she reviews back and is picked up by Lydia Sutton. As they're spreading the field in a six on six, it allows for more space to be taken to goal. Defensive slides are coming from a farther distance, so the more advantage you have offensively. Maria Panzini and Ecker making the save with the shoulder. Panzini slow to get up, and that's why we'll have a whistle. So Maria Panzini able to get to her feet. Puerto Rico had the day off yesterday. Every team has a different day off. And sometimes you get fortune in the schedule where you get to play your first four games and then have the day off before the medal round. As we see the contact, the closeout. And 
and then Baxter kind of landing on Maria Panzini. Lacrosse is a contact, non-contact sport, and oftentimes people don't realize, they say, ah, oh, lacrosse, it's not that physical, it's not that difficult. Then you haven't been watching mm -hmm. lacrosse mm -hmm. because <laughs> there's a lot of contact in the sport. Obviously, referees there to keep things safe, but things do happen on the field. It looks like that was an accident, not anything on purpose. Evans feeding inside and accordingly, uncharacteristically had that go off of her stick right in front. And Tia Riemann will outlet, and Puerto Rico will look for the clear. It used to be a non-contact sport, but the game has certainly evolved. It's gotten faster. The athletes have gotten bigger, faster, stronger, like everything else. Look out. Natalie Panzini able to step in ahead of the swipe check by Morris. And the goggles still only, I think, what, about a decade ago, the goggles were mandated, maybe a little longer, 15 years ago. It all runs together for me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Between the goggles, boundaries, I mean, restraining lines to think that over the last 20 years, all those things have been added into the game, 20 plus, only to make it better. And I think 10 v 10 is another one of those things. Dana Doby talked about it last night after their game versus Scotland when we interviewed, and she said, I wish. Feed by Scholar Carrasquillo and Natalie Panzini has a three goal game against Canada. She wished that the game was at that 10 v 10 format collegiately, but right there wheeling and dealing, Brianna Carrasquillo finding inside Natalie Panzini. Loved their patience on this. The cutting inside, waiting until they found an open player, not forcing anything that was too tight. But patience was key in that last offensive effort. Now Puerto Rico now has surpassed Australia's output against Canada. England scored eight times against the Canadians and the U.S. 16 times on opening night. So Puerto Rico showing just the growth of the game for a first time program in the World Championships. And what we've seen here in this 2019 World Championship, how the, in my opinion, particularly the middle of the pack has grown a lot and the bar has been raised a lot in the middle of the pack. Yesterday after the game is Israel narrowly defeated the Netherlands, which was a 9-5 like final. Uh, they came away impressed with the Dutch and a team that only had one player that had grown up in the U.S. and, and now is a native of uh, Netherlands making residence there. So the middle of the pack started to come along. Hard on the Shawnee defeating Scotland. And for the first time this year, the championship bracket is 16 teams. Five years ago, 2017 World Championship, it was a 12-team championship bracket. So there has never been a 2 versus 15 matchup before. A one versus 16 matchup, their very first of its kind, will be coming your way here on ESPN Plus in about an hour or so. The U.S. will take the field as the one seed taking on Hong Kong, China. Rolling back Antonella Henson Vendrell, and she'll go to the 11 meter. We've talked about the aggressive play of Puerto Rico. That's one of those instances not shying away from contact or pressure or double teams. Love to see them continuing to evolve their game. And a great collapsing defense. Antonella Henson Vendrell. Boy, upon the whistle, Canada was able to jump on her. Puerto Rico 0 for 2 on free position today. Gabriella Henson Vendrell. They've been able to find success, oftentimes sending those cutters through, looking at the big isolation sweeps, finding those miscues on the inside. Definitely their settled play. Only one goal within a fast break situation. Nojaim, quick restart. Scalar Carrasquillo denied. 
Eckert hanging in there. Nice slip pass throw by Nojaim. Canada transitions as we near two minutes left. The push from Sutton, dropping it off accordingly, looking for more. Aurora accordingly. Eckert the save on the other end, and Canada able to convert. We see this shot right here, almost checked out of the stick before a save being made by Cassidy Eckert. Speed of Lydia Sutton, transitioning so well. Canada can be so deadly in their fast breaks. I love the change of level by Aurora accordingly. Again, she's relaxed, calm, takes that extra second before releasing her shot. One quick timeout before we head off in our final two minutes. 17-6, Canada shooting 17 of 30. Accordingly, three goals to go along with two assists. Erica Evans, who's been long done, four for four shooting all coming in the first half, but these are steps for Puerto Rico. And the dream by Natalie Bermudez just after these World Championships end. She's part of the Island Development Committee, will get very involved. They're doing a handful of clinics there, trying to get more fifth and sixth graders on the island going. They already have some teams at that age group. It's a fall sport lacrosse in Puerto Rico. And it's because this fall 2022 is going to be the first fall where they have teams and clinics throughout a full season. And her vision is that there's going to be great athletes in both places someday that fill out the roster like many of the other countries have, where they have a, maybe a group of Americans or first generation, and then also homegrown talents. I love that they've given their team a nickname in honor of their indigenous ancestors, special as they continue to grow in their culture, Las Tainas. Puerto Rico will bring in their backup goalie, Bethany Bonilla Colon of Milton, Massachusetts, an active service member of the U.S. Air Force in Florida. I think this is what's so great about the World Championships, that you can have service members, you can have doctors, lawyers, people from all walks of life, and then you have some players who this is their life. They're a lacrosse coach at the collegiate level, so so many different and fascinating stories behind each and every one of these players from different teams. We have our mother-daughter combination at Sweden, Tekla Jackson with 15-year-old daughter Shella Jackson. At times, they're on the field at the same time. The sister combinations, it truly is a lacrosse celebration taking place here. Canada with the latest draw. And then the festival tournament's taking place here. Uh, I think there's something like 40 teams, U14 up to U18, taking place in the neighboring fields. They all come to watch the games, even some from Canada and England. And even Puerto Rico captain Monica Negron's team, Cardinal Elite, she has a team there. Monica starred at Louisville, where she was Big East Defender of the Year in 2014 that's the program now Canada coach of course Scott Teeter is the coach of I'm sure Scott will be recruiting Cardinal Elite and is recruiting Cardinal Elite on occasion as Monica had started the program in Louisville players from all over the world at that world festival youth event which I think is cool from Italy England Australia Scotland you know, not many times do you have the opportunity to play internationally unless you make a senior team, whereas they are getting a ton of experience, and it's just exciting to be able to meet one another, oftentimes exchanging gifts. The gifts, speaking of which, I think Canada, they win the award for the best gifts, as here is Baxter not shooting. The teams exchange gifts pregame. Lacrosse Canada's gift is a small bottle of Canadian maple syrup. That is a slam dunk, drop the mic. I don't think you can top that. No, and I'm a bit jealous that mm -hmm. you got I've one got and one. I did not. <laughs> I've got one, I will work on getting you one. 
Canada 17-6. They pull away from Puerto Rico. They dominate draws early. Dana Doby and company put together a near complete game. We'll see on the injury on Kay Morissette, but otherwise they shoot the ball great and advance to the quarterfinals. Overall, a wonderful effort by Puerto Rico. I think they did a good job coming into their own as each quarter went on, getting more and more comfortable. And it was a time for Canada to try new things. See other people at the draw, get the second midfield some more runs, rest some players as need be, and you just hope that Kay Morissette is okay and will be able to return, as well as Brooklyn Walker Welch as the tournament progresses. The bracket is up to date and it is a final. The Czech Republic pulls away from Germany and it'll be a two versus 10 matchup in tomorrow's quarterfinals. 5 p.m. Eastern is that matchup. Erica Evans, four goals. Aurora accordingly, three and two to pace Canada. Natalie Panzini, three to lead Puerto Rico. For Courtney Martinez, Connor, and our entire crew here from Towson, my name is Ralph Pinarczyk saying so long and goodbye from the Women's World Across Championship on ESPN+. Plus.